tr- troubling aspect, which is... And I, so we've done a lot of positive. I'm afraid this is a rather gloomy one. Deaths in England and Wales have nearly doubled above what would be expected, hitting a 20-year high. The ONS, Office for National Statistics, saying there are 18,500 deaths in the week to 10th of April. That's 8,000 more than is normal. Now, of course, a lot of that is accounted for by this hideous coronavirus. But also, a lot of it is, it is believed, people not wishing to go to hospital. In some instances, A and E, and in other instances for care as well, because they obviously, and they're right, a hospital is going to be a hot spot for the virus. One paper today says that thousands of cancers are being missed each week because patients aren't going to their GP. Again, they feel they don't want to trouble the NHS. This does speak to the success of the campaign by the government. Stay at home, save lives, protect the NHS. But of course, it is there to to look after you as well, were you to need it. Let's put some of these points to Dr Ian Higginson, who's Vice President of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine and is an emergency department consultant at the University Hospitals in Plymouth. So he and his colleagues are those that we all cheer and applaud for and we'll do it again, of course, tomorrow night. But to bring you into the conversation today, what do you think lies behind this, Doctor? Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, it's, it's not uh, completely clear what's behind this uh, as a full story. So undoubtedly COVID-19 uh, plays a major part. We, we don't know, we simply don't know at this stage whether delayed presentation for, for other illnesses or delayed uh, care for other illnesses is a significant contributing factor or simply a smaller part of the story. But we are worried that some patients with urgent and emergency conditions are anxious about seeking help and uh, maybe either not seeking help or uh, presenting to our services uh, too late. What would your advice be to my listeners? I think the advice would be twofold. So the first bit of advice was uh, that we understand that uh, it, it, it can be... Uh, it, patients can feel anxious about coming to hospitals at the moment uh, with, um, you know, uh, with concerns that uh, there's a higher risk of developing COVID-19 as a result. But I think we would reassure patients that hospitals and staff are doing their very best to separate patients into what are called different streams and to protect patients from the risk by wearing the PPE. It's not just to protect staff, it's also to protect patients. So patients should try not to be anxious about coming. And if if they have um, a condition which could be serious, and we're particularly worried about things like chest pain, about severe abdominal pain, about the symptoms and signs of stroke, uh, or about serious injury, things like that, severe yes. bleeding, we, we would recommend still that they come to emergency departments. Emergency departments are still open for business. Let me ask for you emergency this. conditions. Let me ask we, you would, th- we would say to patients, Sorry. please don't be anxious about coming. We will look after you. Finally, Doctor, and you are more aware than I of of why the government had its campaign to protect the NHS, but do you think the self-isolating campaign, in a sense, has perhaps gone too far and people are dangerously self-isolating and actually possibly dying? I I, I think I wouldn't put it in those sorts of terms. I think uh, self-isolation has clearly had a positive effect around the spread of coronavirus. But um, the, the central message is that if, if patients are suffering from what might be a severe health condition, so the sort of things I was talking about, they shouldn't be anxious about coming to our hospitals. Emergency departments and the hospitals that back them up are here for them, and we are still operating. Good luck to you and all your colleagues. Thanks for the work you do, Dr Ian Higginson, your Vice President of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine and a consultant at the Emergency Department at University Hospitals in Plymouth, 12 after 8. Listening to that is another doctor, Dr Mike Till.